Hey, hey Ann. Good to How see are you. Good to see you too. Um, great. Well, we've got another another um, episode of Holy Grounds, and you're preaching this week, right? I am. I am. I'm looking forward to it. Um, okay. Well, do you have your so, coffee? Uh, yeah. Well, I have. It, it'll have to count for today. It's my yep. my daily water intake. Okay. Uh, but I am. I do have my liquid beverage, and I encourage folks to get theirs too. Yeah. And, um, what uh, we're going to do today is I'm going to invite Ann to read our gospel lesson, um, which is what I'll be preaching on. Uh, I'll give a little background afterwards, and then I have some questions for Anne that I think will help us engage this particular passage. It happens to be a long passage, um, but it's a beautiful one, and it's and it's also a difficult one. So um, I'll invite Anne to do that for us. All right. So this is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. And I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Great, thank you. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's Ooh, tough passage. Yeah, it's a very tough passage. Mm -hmm. um, just a, a little a little background, and then I want mm -hmm. us to, um, I'm myself just personally curious to uh, hear what Anne's gonna say about a couple of these questions. Um, this, uh, we celebrate this upcoming Sunday is the last Sunday in Pentecost. It's also called Christ the King. And it's called that because of this gospel passage where the son of man is sitting on the throne. A couple things um, to notice here that this is, um, it's very easy in scripture, particularly a lot of the parables to read it as if it's addressed to a person and individually. In this particular passage, Jesus has the nations in front of him, and he's, addre he's addressing each of the nations um, as a people corporately. So that has a lot of resonance and a lot of beautiful resonance to uh, the Old Testament, where Jesus had a covenant with a people through a person, but with a people. And, and it was he was very concerned, God was very concerned with the relationship that Israel as a nation had with other nations. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of see some of the parallels already there. Um, so that's the first thing is this is addressed to um, 
certainly to uh, a large group of people. We might think of it as addressed to a country. We might even think of this as addressed to a church mm -hmm. um, right. a corporation. So there's that, a corporate body. The other thing that's really interesting and, and uh, which is, um, I think you brought out beautifully in your reading of this, is that neither group recognized Jesus Christ the King. That in this, in this they didn't recognize where he was. Um, and so, in a sense, the judgment that that was received um, was a kind of blindfold uh, judgment. It was a, um, you know, when they do the um, the drug trials and they have a placebo and they and they have someone who gives them the drug and a placebo. In this case, um, this is Christ the King Jesus looking at the nations and addressing them and saying how you treated the least of these um, matters, and it matters because that's where I'm found. And neither of them knew that that's where Jesus would be found mm -hmm. there. So it's a very it's it, it's a very challenging passage in a lot of ways. Right. But I want us uh, certainly to remember that this is um, addressed to the nations um, and how they treat the least vulnerable, and um, the fact that there is a surprise where they find Jesus. So I want to turn um, to Anne in this and uh, ask, uh, this is the first uh, question I have for you, Anne, and it's a kind of, it's kind of a strange question, but I, I hope it'll make some sense is, um, where uh, do you encounter Jesus or when have you encountered Jesus in a person or place that was unexpected, that you didn't think where that's where Jesus would be? Well, I, I, I think what comes to mind right away is um, in a gentleman um, by the name of Carl. And Carl um, was um, developmentally um, uh, challenged and he was on his own. And, um, and he was being taken advantage of by this absolutely horrible person in, mm -hmm. in our community. And so um, our church stepped in and, um, and, and tried to help him. Um, you know, and I thought, yeah, we're being nice, but um, I had, um, Carl had horrible dental problems. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, um, my husband and one of our parishioners who was a dentist, um, really, they stepped in, the two of them. And um, I could see Jesus in their actions, but also in Carl and his, um, just his willingness to um, allow them to minister to him because mm -hmm. it was such a painful process. And so mm -hmm. my uh, Mike would drive him to the dentist appointments and um, this dentist, uh, Bill, he was amazing. He ended up um, removing all his teeth. Oh. Yeah. Um, and giving him false teeth so that for the first time in years, um, Carl um, had a smile and, uh, and you could just, you know, I could see Christ in all three of those people in, at mm. that time. So in those that were serving as well mm -hmm. as that person who was, was being served. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. So it was, uh, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. It had a, a huge impact on, on myself actually, and Mike and my whole family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, I mean, he was a big part of our life for uh, mm. a few years and he passed away um, about a year and a half ago, which was, sad um but he was just he was uh, a pretty remarkable guy um so positive even mm. in the midst of his struggles so well may he rest in peace and rise in glory yeah. amen yeah amen. great thank you beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautiful sure um another experience i want to ask you about and i think this is is important in this particular gospel passage um, where Jesus, as Christ the King, is very focused on whether, I mean, the, the words he used, um, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. And then he says to those, um, I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Mm -hmm. So this category, uh, this really 
incredibly important Christian category of how do we offer welcome and how are we received Yeah, um, yeah. is really important. So I'm wondering if, if it's okay um, if you might share an experience that you've had of not being welcomed and what you did with this experience um, and how it affected you uh, in your faith. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, it's a, this is a tough one. Um, and this happened a, a few years back um, in a church community, actually. Um, you know, there are some, some communities that welcome new clergy really well, and mm -hmm. there are others that do not. And um, when I, I came to a particular community, I was called there. Um, there were some folks that absolutely adored the previous rector, who was a wonderful, wonderful priest, mm -hmm. um, but had moved on. Mm -hmm. And um, they weren't ready for uh, another, another person to come in and, um, and lead them and were um, made it quite clear in, in very visible and outward ways that they didn't want to have anything to do with me or, um, or, and my family. I mean, it was. What were, what were some of those ways, Anne, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah. Um, uh, not having a place prepared uh, mm -hmm. for us to stay in. We were going to be living in, a, in the rectory. You know, work wasn't done. Um, uh, uh, being mean spirited in emails and comments about myself and my family. Um, and so it was really hurtful. Um, mm. And so, um, you know, I had had a couple choices I could have made. I could have left uh -huh. um, or I could choose to love them. And so um, I choose, you know, I, I made the choice to love them and it was hard, hard work. Um, what was the, what were some of the first steps that you did in, in making that? I think it's, it's really interesting you, you talk about that is a choice you made. So what are some of the things that helped you in that choice? Um, I made um, uh, listening sessions where I could just talk, or uh, not I talk, they could talk. Yep. And they could um, share some of their grief about losing, mm. um, losing a person that they dearly loved. Mm -hmm. They felt, I think, rejected them. And it may have been a way to protect themselves from yeah. you know, investing in someone else. Um, and it was just, it was just listening and, um, and just being with and, um, not allowing some of the bad behavior to push me away from them. Um, just, I just kept trying, you know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't you, allow myself to be a, a doormat, but I sure, sure. continued to try to be in relationship. Yeah. Um, so it's, it sounds like, I mean, a couple things you, you did really beautifully and not easily either, which is you created uh, created space for multiple voices mm -hmm. and that you did not treat them the way that you were being treated and that you didn't reduce them to their sinful behavior. Right, right. And yeah. I think that, that, you know, probably all of us have experienced that at one time or another in our lives where we weren't, yeah. weren't made to feel welcome. And sometimes it's not even intentional. Yeah, um, yeah. You, know, you go into a new place or a new situation and, and it isn't that people are trying to intentionally, you know, stay away, but, sure. um, you know, they may just not have room in their life for anyone else, or uh, they may be so caught up in other mm -hmm. things that, that they don't even think about what a stranger or a newcomer might, might feel like. Yeah. And so um, it, it, uh, it's, it's, well, it's, it's interesting. Important. I think that's a beautiful, I mean, it's a very grace-filled, I think, perspective to be able to place people as in part of a larger story. I also think that um, Jesus, in asking his followers to, and not only in this passage, but in plenty of other passages, about um, the concern about who are you welcoming and who are you not, and even, and who and what to do with those who have not welcomed you, you know, where, right. where Jesus says, shake the dust off your feet and walk. It doesn't, it doesn't say curse them. He doesn't say bad mouth them. He just says, he says, acknowledge that and then move on. And right. there's, there's some really beautiful, hard, but beautiful 
the guidance that Jesus gives us on this. Right. right. Yeah. The final question I have for you, Anne, is, and this is something I try to do when I read scripture, um, and it's to not, in a, in, it's a strange way of maybe saying it, but to not, to not identify with the privileged character in the passage, but maybe with the one who is being ministered to. And so this particular question, I think, have you yourself been in the category of the least of my brothers and sisters? And um, one, if, if, that, if you've had that experience, and if not, how do you, um, how do you place yourself in that category? Um, I think of this, this parallel sort of story where we hear the, the Good Samaritan. M most of us try to be the Good Samaritan, but what if we're the person on the road who needs the help? And so I'm thinking about that in this category of the least of my brothers and sisters. And has that ever been an experience for you? It has. Um, a number of years back, um, my family and, and myself went through some um, really difficult um, financial um, struggles. And um, we lost our home. We lost um, uh, a lot. And so I was worried, where are we going to live? Mm -hmm. um, how are we going to feed the kids? Um, and it was devastating. Um, and to uh, admit that I needed the help mm -hmm. um, was really hard. And what was remarkable is in particular was the way my family reached out. Um, and just, you know, when I ex talked about where we were at, um, after conversations with my sisters and my mother, it was like, I, 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 it was still a difficult situation, but I didn't feel so alone and so yeah. desperate. Yeah. I, I think it's that feeling of desperation that you don't have anyone to rely on. Um, it's isolating Yeah. and it, yeah. Um, it, it can shape your whole outlook. And so I think being able to ask for help is something, um, I think it's a sign of strength. It took me a long time to get there. I mean, uh, this was a big secret. I didn't want anyone to sure. know about it. It was just awful. Yeah, um, it, it's a. Yeah. I think it's a. It's a particularly powerful. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for you sharing that and being vulnerable in that. Um, one of the things I think that you highlight really beautiful in that experience is uh, Jesus's concern for the least of my brothers and sisters is also Jesus's concern that we are in relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. And that one of the most uh, difficult, I think, experiences in my life similar to that is, is, the, is the isolation, mm -hmm. the, um, the lack of healthy connected relationships because of the shame or the embarrassment, yeah, exactly. and not yeah. feeling part of a community. This, we've joked about this before where mm -hmm. you know, we've had experiences where people say, well, you know, um, you know, when I feel better, I'll come to church. And you always yeah. think that's oh, but no, that, come now. <laughs> please, this is when you should be coming because this is right. when we can actually be present for each other. Right, right. Um, and you know, and somebody said to me, um, you know, when you can't pray yourself, you need to come to church so we can yeah. pray for you. Um, yeah. but to able to be able to acknowledge that is really, really hard. Really yeah. Hard. And that's and I think it's a it's a beautiful part of um, beautiful part of our tradition, particularly in our in our literature, where we talk about prayers of the people, yeah. is um, we invite people to pray certainly for people that are on their own hearts and minds, but we publicly bring up situations, people who are um, in need and in concern, mm -hmm. so that one, we can pray for them, and two, that we can be made available to them. Mm -hmm. And if that person happens to be us, that others can be made available to us. Right. In our need. Right. And then that way, you know, this category of the least, the least of my brothers and sisters, Jesus says, that's where I am. Right. That's this whole idea yeah. of this reversal with the Christ, the King is found in the least. And it's a beautiful mm -hmm. um, and striking passage because Jesus is quite clear um, in this kind of parable of judgment that um, we are going, those who we 
a void relationship with, we will be held accountable for. Right. You know, and I think about particularly right now in our culture, where we tend to blame people for the situations that they're in. Yeah. Um, and so when we do that, when we have that blaming culture, well, you know, it's because they made bad choices or, um, you know, they, they should have done something differently. Um, it's really difficult to then um, be able to say, hey, I need some help. Yeah, um, absolutely. And yeah. And really difficult to, that can often be a way that I or you or other people can then not have to be in relationship with them. Right. And not even have to see Jesus in them. Yeah. 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 And so it's a very, again, this is, um, this is a very, it's a very difficult, but it's a very important scripture, um, primarily because it says to us, and I think it says to the church, you know, are you, are you a place that welcomes Christ? And not to make that assumption that we do. Yeah, 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 we're so friendly. But when we look within our congregation and who is with us, yeah. and, and I wanna be clear, St. John's does some wonderful work. Absolutely, in, absolutely. In, in living this out as a community. Yeah, but, uh, but I think that our own church and the larger church, yeah. the church Catholic, universal, mm -hmm. the degree to which if, if we are missing groups of people that are part of the least of in our own communities, right. then we are missing parts of the body of Christ. Right, right. So. Great. Well, Thank I'm you so much, man. I'm glad you're preaching this week, Stephen. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not an easy one to preach on, but oh. um, it, it's quite powerful, but I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I have some thoughts, so hopefully uh, they'll be of some help. But uh, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us uh, for this yes. talking conversation. Um, we just are so glad that you're engaging scripture, that you're engaging each other, and that you are part of St. John's. We'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye. God bless you. See you, Anne. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, bye.